Hello, hello. Okay, good. We have sound now. We are live and ready to roll. Uh, Ashley, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. All right, and sound check. How are we doing, Mantha, on the sounds? Can you hear me and Ashley? I can hear you guys. I mean... Uh, so how are you doing, Miss Mantha? Oh, sorry, I'm really loud. <laughs> I'm, uh, turn down my, uh, volume real quick. Okay, hope that's better. Uh, I'm doing alright. I'm tired, but... I'm always tired, and I'm really excited for D&D, because it's D&D. Yay, D&D. Awesome. So you just turned yourself down on us as well, so that's all right. I'll fix it. All right, so when last we left, our intrepid adventurers had... Come into Nashville taking a step back um, actually before we get into that um, I want to start off with a little bit of an icebreaker uh, just to say hello to, to the two of you um, what is one of your favorite go-to songs Let's start with you, uh, Ashley. One uh, of the ones you like, one probably the song you've listened to the most times in your life. What would that be? I do not really listen to music, so um, the music I do listen to is mostly orchestral or like game music. So, um, if I had to pick songs that I've listened to the most, it's probably is like Pokemon music. Because I love Pokemon and I play it all the time. So, but yeah, I'm not really a music person. Like, probably the worst person to ask about that sort of thing. All right, and what about you, Mantha? Um, I'm like on the opposite end of the spectrum from Ashley. I listen to music all the time, and I've actually got a playlist on Spotify for music that I've listened to for more than 24 hours. So, I don't know what my go-to song is. Um, probably anything by Dodie? Is that D-O-D-I? Uh, D-O-D-I-E. And what kind of music is that? Um, she's an indie, she, uh, sorry, uh, I don't know, lots of, uh, she, she does piano, she does ukulele, she gets friends to do stuff with her, just, I don't know, it's, like, calming, it's very comforting music to hear. Awesome. All right. Well, speaking of music, you guys had heard some music as you were walking through the marketplace and met some kids who were trying to raise some money for a game they were playing. Hmm. And you bought some potions. And then you continued on did some other stuff, uh, taking a step back on what's happening in the world today. Nashkill has been under attack a couple of times by these, uh, the city, I mean, the uh, country below Amen, A-M-N. And all that's happened so far are some terrorist attack that they've traced back to them, to be honest. They can't definitively point fingers. 
there hasn't been any kind of treaty, treaties of war or anything, uh, formal declaration of any kind. Uh, all they've had is these things. They do know that there is some troop movement and some bat, uh, amassing of troops to the south. But other than that, there hasn't really been any kind of definitive anything. Mercenaries were brought in from Baldur's Gate after the uh, and the Brawl's Gate area, Sword Coast area, um, after the attacks. But they've been here for uh, almost a month now, uh, and there's lots of grumblings and stuff. Um, some, several of the companies have left, so there's now down to about 100 outside the gates. But in preparation for what could possibly be this war, there were some things that were left that needed to be done. And one of them was to find out if the uh, the rumor was true about a fort or a tower or something in the mountains that would allow the Amon spellcasters to cast magic into the city of Nashkill itself. The other one was that underneath the city of Nashkill, there are sp rumors of artifacts um, that could be used in this war in case it happened and so you all decided to look at the tower first in the midst of um, after doing some other things you guys did find a tower in the, the burning keep is what it was called uh, and they did find a big huge elaborate magical setup that would allow them to cast spells into Nashkel um, you simply destroyed it and came back. There's some, several of you are interested in the hag who ran the Burning Keep. Um, and so we're still waiting on that to see, see what you guys are going to want to do with that. There was talk of going back to the Burning Keep to do that. So now you guys, while you, because that was a month ago when you were first given those two tasks. In the interim, some of the town's guard were tasked with going down below Nashkill to try to find out some information. Cromwell, one of your former party members, led us a contingent of soldiers down there. Uh, very small. There was four, uh, I believe a total of five of them, um, went and were starting, starting the search. The other... Uh, but they never came back, and that was about two weeks after you guys had left. So a week later, another adventuring party was requested to go down there. They also haven't returned. It's now a week after that that you all are now looking to do so. You found out through a couple different means that there was an entrance in a well. So you went down below and uh, found the well. There's an illusionary wall. You guys went through the illusory wall and found a tunnel that led to a dock. Um, and because I spent a lot of time on the image, I'm gonna show you one more, once more the image real quick. <laughs> but this, the dock, Waiting for Vantage Guns to catch up. The dock was on a river. And um, this underground freshwater river moves relatively slowly. Uh, it's a very sh relatively shallow deck. Oh, awesome. Never mind. None of you guys are on the, the thing. Let me remove the line of sight. It's just blackness. Lining. The void. <laughs> I was like, "Huh, oh, is it just not loading, or am I on the wrong map?" I was like, go. so confused. <laughs> so yeah, because none of you, none of the tokens are on it. Anyway, so I'll, let me fix this. So there's the dock with the boat. Um, you guys got in the boat, used the oars and the rope. Um, you really don't need both, but uh, 
it goes a little bit smoother if you use both and you travel down this underground river um, and on the other side of the river you saw an opening so uh, being the intrepid adventurers you were and explorers you crossed over the river used some pythons to pound uh, and tie up the rope and went in and that's where you we left off you guys had just gotten in in here and f were met by some shadow sturges waiting for the map to pop up and i'll share it bugs gross giant gross <laughs> mosquito bugs ew I mean, yeah. <laughs> Jen's feeling Boy, the same way. She's had enough bugs for the day, even though, like, the surges aren't actually bugs. Yes, neither one of the things you fought were bugs, but that's They're okay. bug esque. They are on, like, the same. They are like, creepy and crawly, <laughs> so yes. All right, so you guys had come in from around the corner. Um, let me throw. Uh, Oh, good. Yeah, it, it's showing right now. I must have party sight on. Anyway, you had come in from around the corner to the east. I mean, to the west. You were moving to the east. Um, there was a whole crap ton of sturges. 20 to, 21, I believe, 22 to be exact. Uh, and Genesis quickly dispatched them, mostly, for the most part, with her spiritual guardian. And then... You moved around, uh, found a couple empty rooms, and then came down here and f found a couple carrion crawlers taking up residence here. More bugs! Bug looking dead <laughs> bugs. But these ones are like undead. Wiggly dead bugs. <laughs> Rotting bugs. It's not a pleasant uh, smell or experience. They're just kind of gross. So those are the sturges. They're more bat-like than uh, insect-like. Although they do behave like mosquitoes. Ew. And this is what you're finding fighting now. Uh, do either of you remember the odd th thing about these carrion crawlers? They're dead. Or rotting. Yeah, they're like big. And uh, they looked, at some points, they looked like they were supposed to be dead. But definitely were not. I mean, they're still trying to eat us. But, like, they're also rotting from the inside out. So... Take that for uh, what you will. All right, and I'm checking one other thing. I, uh, what the heck? This it looks like Gorgio redeemed a sound alert that did not redeem. I did not hear. Interesting. I should be hearing sound alerts. Um, we want to see Peter though. Yes, he also redeemed Peter. Awesome. I get both animals. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I don't have the stream up and stuff, but I should have. Oh, I, I remember what happened. Okay, so. Mantha, I am gonna. I do need to rely on you. Um, if you would uh, let me know if uh, something happens and I don't react, I was in the middle of a of narrating there. But uh, if I miss it, I can't fix the sound alerts while I'm streaming. And I did not leave a note, so I'm gonna make a note now, so I'll fix it as soon as we're done. 
and then uh, so next week we'll be ready to go. But uh, just a warning. And that the I'm... answer to your question is, I was gone all day, and so Parker is very much my dog. Um, hangs out with me uh, pretty much almost twenty four seven. He will sleep with one of the other girls uh, for a few hours, but then he typically comes back to me. Um, but so he was very emotionally distraught because I was gone all day. And so when I came home, we played for a little while, went for a walk, uh, gave him a treat and stuff. And so now he is happily asleep in his little bed next to me. Hmm. Oh boy. All right, so here is the maps. Let me go get Peter so I can give him his Peter redemption. And I'll be right back, guys. Cat. <laughs> Cat. 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 All right, well, that might have been a little shorter than normal, but if it makes you feel any better in Gorgio, my nice black shirt is now covered in white fur. Huh. I'll be this is my uh, mica street. shirt. Original Criddles, Taste the Pain Bow, with hmm. D20s on it. All right. So that was Peter. Uh, Matthew, if you would mind checking them off, checking that one off for me, I'd appreciate it. All right. I don't see anything else in the chat. It does make you feel better. <laughs> but too, thank you so much for coming by, Ngorgio. Uh, Ngorgio does. Uh, I'm going to stop talking to the players for a second. Ngorgio does some live stream D&D. Live play d and I mean. Yep, so that's the last thing he was doing as well. I don't know that he does anything else. I don't know that you play anything else right now um, or anything else on your stream. I think it's all he does, d and uh, So check him out. He has lots of different games, a couple different uh, DMs as well. I think he still has a couple different DMs. I know. Um, every once in a while when I'm looking at his, his when I look at his stuff, 
He used to have a different DM. I don't know if he still does now or not, but I know he's doing uh, Curse of Strahd. Um, Jungles of Chult, I believe, he's still doing. So, uh, so check him out. Good stuff there from Mangorjo. Uh, he has a lot of chat stuff, too, that you can do. So if you like screwing with your players or helping the players, his is a good stream to watch for that. All right, so let us get back into the action. There's still one carrying crawler, barely alive. Um, he says he does Pathfinder every once in a while, but typically just d, &D. So while I am fixing the stream, it is Tuss' turn. He is in the face of this thing. This thing has uh, actually um, this thing is in Tuss' face. It was crawling from the ceiling. It had come down. Had paralyzed Tusk, and, uh, and then was slowly starting to eat him. Uh, as you can see there on the stream, with the stream labs, he's down only 90 hit points out of his 145. Uh, only 90 hit points. So, Tusk, it is your turn. Uh -oh. Okay, sorry, I was uh, trying to catch myself up on my uh, Tusk lore. I believe he was restrained before. Did he just, like, make it out of that? He was. He did not rage uh, because he didn't, at the time, he wasn't worried about killing these two things, taking damage. Um, so, and now they're mostly well, dead, so I don't know that he would rage. Oh, I said restrained, as in carrion crawler. Oh no, he's out of that. He's no longer on that. He's looking at the combat tracker, that's not one of his things. So he's out. Well, um, I in that case, I think Tusk is gonna do what Tusk does best, and he's going to uh, strike at the carrion crawler with his great axe. Oh, there's multiple. Oh, uh, um. So like, he's, I believe he has one if if he's uh, doing um, reckless. He has a G W M, and I'm gonna great weapon mastery. It. Yeah, and because that's what Tusk always does, he's gonna reckless great weapon master. I don't know if the uh, reckless automatically applies. Nope, it, it does not. Nope, he's got, yep, there you go. Nice, so that's a hit. Okay. Sad damage, but it's enough. All right, so he doesn't have to worry about his second attack because it is enough. Um, I now need a strength saving throw from Tusk. <laughs> As he falls from the ceiling. Mm -hmm. All right, so as he slashes into this thing, um, again, these things are, uh, let me, I, I do have to check one thing first before I give you the details. Yep, so uh, as he slices into this thing with with bronze tusk, his bronze great axe, 
slices into it. Uh, is able to lop several chunks of this thing off. Uh, and finally it is enough. And it shudders. And then Tusk's eyes get big as he realizes what's about to happen. As this thing collapses onto him. Um, almost like in a uh, slinky. Just and then it slowly falls. Um, he's able to push it off. But he does take a little extra damage. Um, but he's able to finally push it off. And he's covered in this ichor and, and black grossness that's half molded and he just the the stench coming from his is pretty bad um but uh now but that hey, the fight is the over right. that's right but now the fight is over and stuff uh genesis you notice there's a little something in the corner um straight ahead of you looks to be uh like a doll. Well, guess he's gonna go over and investigate. Uh, which corner? The bottom left. I'm guessing behind the rocks. Nope, straight ahead of you in the corner. Which? Wait, what? Sorry. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Um, then Jenna's gonna go investigate. She's like, goes up and like checks, make sure that like Tusk is like conscious, and he's like, hey, he's fine, he's fine, and kind of sidles past him to take a look at the thing that she saw. It is indeed a. Can we try to give you guys a rest? I'm just trying to get you out of initiative. Click. It hmm. is a doll. It looks it's dirty. Um and it's but uh it looks uh it's like a mostly cloth doll. And it has it's wearing a little blue dress and it has little um, yarn hair, black hair. Well, that's yeah. Weird. I wouldn't I... touch that if I were you. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Fantasy Grounds is lagging a little bit. Jen's gonna go ahead and cast Identify. And, you know, not immediately touch the creepy looking doll. Alright, well, in order to Identify, you do have to touch it. Oof. If we look at the Definition of identify. You casting as a ritual or as a spell? Probably as a spell. She'd like to get. Uh... Okay. Well, we're touching it. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, does Catherine know if she could cast identify through her mage hand? <laughs> or actually, she can't cast it. Never mind. Uh... Yeah, you choose one object you must touch throughout the casting of the spell. Uh... Use the spell in chat for anybody watching. Well... Um... Or creature. Uh, and the answer to your question, K3 is through your mage hand? No. If you have a, you can do it through your familiar. Either one of you can cast it through your familiar. Because you can cast touch spells through your, through your familiars. Mm. Anyway, um, 
So yes, it is a magic doll. And let me put it in the party sheet. Waiting for Fantasy Ground to catch up. I just need to do one thing. So I D I E space one D. Sure hope this thing isn't cursed or something. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like if it was, that it would have just gone straight in Jen's inventory, though, and not in the party sheet. You never know, he could be doing that to trick you. He could. But so far, he has not thrown cursed items at us yet. So, like... There you go. Oh, hello, did somebody join? <gasps> it's me! Nick is here! He's muted, so I don't know. All right, so go ahead and release Tusk. If you right click on his character portrait, one of the radial things says release. Sorry, gotta figure it out. Yeah, straight down, 6 o'clock, when you right-click on his portrait in the uh, upper right corner. Not in the party sheet, but up on Fantasy Grounds itself. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> Alright, oh, so I cleared gone. it, so now he can oh. grab it. Uh, so you're going to put it in Tuss inventory while you have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Nope, sorry, already released it. <laughs> All right, no. so this is a Pardon talking that? doll. So, Genesis, are you saying anything as you finish the identify spell? Oh, that's interesting. Mm, Kither doesn't like that. So it's... As I'm trying to remember the name of the spell. It's called Magic Mouth, right? That That's the one I'm thinking of? There's a Magic Mouth spell, yes. It creates a large Magic Mouth that speaks depending on when the certain conditions are met. Yeah, so it's base, it's like the Magic Mouth spell, except it's got uh, a couple phrases that you can do. That's, uh, it's interesting. It's not cursed, though, so that's what I was worried about <laughs> as I touched it. So you can teach it up to six phrases. Um, <sighs> up to six words long and as long as each when the condition is met the doll will speak not cursed is uh, good that's not nice. <clears throat> close close <laughs> so tusk is covered in gore from this rotting thing that fell on top of him as it was eating him and so as you pulled yourself out of it and from underneath it uh, you're just covered in this grossness 
Okay. Um. Probably would spend some time clearing that so it doesn't like infect my wounds or anything. We could With always what? just dunk him in the river. True, true. We could walk back to the river, <laughs> but. So tell me to that point, <laughs> just kind of. What do you clean yourself with? Um, probably would take like a um. Well, he wouldn't have a rag or anything. He'd probably take like a spare blanket from his like sleeping pouch to like try and get most of it off. Um, just like rubbing it off, kind of deal, and then would just use some of his like um water from like the alchemy jug and uh help clean it if it got into any wounds or whatnot. Probably would dump it on his head a little bit to help there. <laughs> um yay alchemy jug. Alright, so you guys got the experience for those two encounters. Um as Tusk Starting to smell a little bit better, um, but the whole passageway reeks as these two corpses are there, uh, and there's now mud collected beyond these rocks where sort of where Kithri and Genesis are. I know that they're gross and everything, but Jen is also a little curious as to like, okay. Why were these things like that? Why were they uh, like rotting on the inside? So she doesn't like doing it, but she's going to uh, investigate uh, probably the one that was eating Tusk, the carrion crawler, and try to see if she can find out why it was like that. Ew. Kether's not helping. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, surprisingly, it tastes like strawberry jam. No. <laughs> it sounds like I'm good at medicine. <laughs> you did say a thorough investigation, right? Investigation, <laughs> um, not thorough. There you go. There's a push the roll for it to you. Alright, so this definitely wasn't natural uh, as you're looking through this. Um, I need one other. Yeah, so. Uh, it's not normal, uh, and it looks, uh, especially how the one came back after it was collapsed, uh, it didn't regenerate, so you're thinking these things may have been some kind of zombie. Hmm. Fun. Did we burn them then? <laughs> oh no, the, I mean... You could if you want to, but uh, the these little guys, and she kind of like gestures to the uh, critters that are uh, jumping around her. Uh, I don't, I don't know if it's like meta to say that they do radiant damage, but they do radiant damage. <laughs> so they they should stop them from reviving because they are. Imbued with clerical power. Yes. And all of you would know at this point that a zombie, they don't regenerate. So if they hit, um, if they're enough damage to die, they have a saving throw. If they pass the saving throw, they don't die. They just stay at one, sort of like a orc, half orc does. Yeah. Um, but once they're dead, they're dead. So they won't mm -hmm. come back. Now, someone else could come along and try to animate the corpse again, but as far as the coming back, that won't happen. It 
does raise the question of why they, they were like that there. Or uh, what uh, there is something yeah. around that just didn't have that effect on things in this area, probably farther down this larger pathway. Or someone posted them as guards, which both don't necessarily vote well. And both probably means there's a foe ahead of some undead power, necromancy power. Um, but I do like putting necromancers in their place. I do hate necromancers as well, so... You know, if we're lucky, maybe it's that one guy that we've been... Well, that we lost track of a while back. We are uh, not that lucky. <laughs> true. I mean, how many necromancers could there be, though? Enough. Uh, probably more than one. All right, so what do you guys want to do? So if, we, if I remember correctly, there was some other pathways that were down back where we came from, which we could either go check out those, or we could keep wallowing down this path. Well, you were the one that said to follow the right wall, so... Maybe keep going? I mean, like, anybody have any, uh, qualms about that? True, we could always... Well, we'll have to circle back anyways to, um, get back to the boat. We can just check out the other pathways then. Who knows, this might even lead to a dead end. Though I kind of doubt it. Well, well pushing mm. forward, unless, um, Crack, Kithri, you have any other opinions? Actually, is. Uh, Logan's not actually here. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, it's like, actually, is Logan even really here? Yeah. He's <laughs> asleep. But. Ah, <laughs> uh, Crack, the usual silent type. <laughs> <You're me>. <laughs> 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 Just imagine, well, well, the session he's not here, we're going to make both his hair. Yeah. 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 Oh, God. I was going to say, is like, actually, yeah. is Logan even really here? Yeah. He's asleep, but... Okay, uh, do you, you have an opinion? Really, uh, what's this <laughs> door? I guess I'm going to, uh, just kind of slip it in my bag of holding. Mm. That character voice devolved, but... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're taking the doll then? Yeah. I mean, she did specifically say it was going in the bag of holding, but yes. Un unless you guys want it, I mean... No, go ahead. I have absolutely <laughs> no interest. Um, sorry. Githri, did you say anything about an opinion? or No, no I don't particularly have an opinion. All right, then. Um, then I guess we'll push forward. Um, and Tusk will turn around and start walking forward. <laughs> Looks like my, there might be a larger opening ahead, but also a pathway to the left here, halfway down the tunnel. He'll comment as he starts going down the tunnel. <laughs> He's just kind of assuming you'll follow. Alright, so this tunnel does get smaller, obviously. Um, it looks like they may have tried on occasion to get through the first 5 or 10 feet, but uh, and then turn back, so on the walls you do see there's some slime and stuff, but for the most part... Um, it doesn't look like they've come up on much beyond where you all are now. There's a larger opening ahead. Um, and this one to our left curves. Left or straight, Jen? Her mic got knocked by the cat, so uh, give her a second. <laughs> it's fine. She just does this a lot. Um, Sven, I believe my camera is working. I at least I hope it's working properly. So I don't know if 
you have to do anything on that end. There you um, are. Ta-da! Awesome. Woo! Yeet. Cool. Thank you. I do appreciate you uh, being on camera. One of these no, no, days, no. we'll get these ladies on camera. Mm. Get something that somebody actually wants to look at. Mm. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Nick is so handsome, though. I yeah, mean... I mean, that's true. But, like, <laughs> me is not something you want to see on camera. I can promise all of our nice viewers that. I don't know. I think you're pretty. I absolutely agree. I like uh, okay. And even if that wasn't the case, but it is the case, it has nothing to do with looks. It also, well, not nothing, but I mean, that's not the only qualification. So, I mean, look at us. Nick and I are on there. So, um, yeah. anyway, Nick, do you mind running crack? Yeah, I'll totally run crack. All right, so uh, go ahead and uh, clear him. Right click. Yep, go on. Let me clear him for you. With, I'll grab him in a second. Right, so he's ready to be grabbed when you get a chance. There we go. All right. Anyway, um, but yeah, uh, the just seeing the facial expressions and and the the animals and stuff. Um, it, it's fun having people on camera. But again, I'm not going to force anybody who doesn't want to. You guys are letting me stream, so that's enough. Yeah. One day, maybe you'll change your mind and join us. Um. So moving on, you guys, you see that the, the there's a winding curve, curving passage to the west, to the right, I mean left. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you so. see in front of, ahead of you, it looks like you'll see these large roots are protruding down from the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Uh, someone want to real quick pop their head down this le uh, left tunnel um, see if there's anything more beyond that I'm going to try and take a couple steps closer to this larger chamber ahead oh sure I'll I can that way. Yeah. Tuss is going to like move to there and then wait as he like wait back see what he can see more of the room um and waiting on his, uh, you know, friends to report. <laughs> Large rooms, okay. Looks like a storage room of some kind. So, Kithri, you wouldn't be able to see anything there. You feel I did pop Genesis, in. but other than that, you, you you can tell there's a room there, but oh, you can't oh. see because you not you have nothing that gives you any sight. I see. Crack, I think, is the only one who has light right now. Yeah, he has, um, as I click on him, he has a little light emitting from him. And if you zoom in, you can actually, like, kind of see the color difference. Yep. Yeah, because it fades away after, like, 20 feet. Jen also has the light cell on her. You do? Jen has light spell on? I have it twice. So okay, well, then you don't have it on, so give me just a second. So I take all that back, Kithri. You absolutely would see it. Uh, but let okay. me fix it because this should be in color. Color. Um, because right now you look, you're seeing with the dark, dark vision. All right, so in the meantime, um, both of you give me a percentile. Uh, by both of you, I mean Genesis and Tusk. Hmm. Lights. You probably... Token light. That. Oh, I'm clicked on crack. Well. <laughs> You're correct. All right, so Nick, uh, Tusk, what is Tusk doing? Um, Tusk is kind of like standing at the edge of the room, kind of leaning just into the um, entryway where it kind of gets a little bit wider to, like, try and uh, see a bit more. Um, like, while he hears, like, 
Jen and K3 kind of like walk down the tunnel, see if he's like sees anything moving um, or anything. Um, just standing there right at the uh, entryway. If he thinks he sees something that's like just out of view, he probably set a little closer into the, the yep, entryway. But at the moment, he's just kind of looking and um, seeing what he can see. All right. Just yeah, like and just like holding it up. Well, she calls back. It looks like a story or something. And she's going to poke around just a little bit more, see if she can see what is inside the box without breaking it. All right, and so uh, now you can see it in color, correct? Yes, I can. All right, yeah, so. Um, and then, by the way, if you ever get out, like, back in the main tunnel, the color will extend for 30 feet, and then beyond that will be grayscale okay, for 30 cool. more feet. Anyway, uh, so that's how you know your light spell is on. Um, you see these are very dusty, very old cobwebs. Um, the barrels, there's three barrels st um, stacked in a pyramid, and there's an old cr crate. Well, I think she's more drawn to the crate initially, for no reason. <laughs> Kithering, correct, probably here. Tell us, like, after hearing Jen kind of call back, like, it's a storeroom that means there's someone here storing stuff. And necromancers probably higher bet so far. <laughs> Just a little side comment. <laughs> Which Kithering may or may not hear as she, like, goes back to where Jen is. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you see uh, written, etched on a side in uh, very, very faded. You can barely tell and see it at all. Looks like it may have been charcoal or wax. Uh, part of a word, you're guessing that it, it says nails. Um, but some of it, it's been rubbed off and missing from the age. You're guessing it's probably at least 10 years since anybody has used this, this uh, crate. From how bad the wood has warped and started, you know, to age. Well, it says to me, uh... Is there a convenient way of opening it? You can probably pry out the top. I'm not sure if I have anything to do. <laughs> so as you push and pull, you realize that the, the top actually comes off so it's pretty easy it's warped a little bit but you're able to, to pry your dagger in there a little bit and pop it up enough to where you can just pull it off uh, and it looks like there's there's just a layer of rust the bottom looks to be about two inches thick oh, at one point it was na nails but over t over the time as damp as it is in here it's just now one conglomerate of rust. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> and she kind of just sets the lid back on. It's not like they need to be super well protected anymore. It's worst case scenarios already happened. And to save time, you see the top barrel is empty. There's... Uh, it looks to be a large crack along the bottom of it. Uh, 
and you see ancient residue on the floor or whatever was in it had spilled out a long time ago uh, the one on the right has looks to be about half full and the one on the, the left is full is there a specific color that the residue is to give an indication of what it holds no it's way too long it's just the the stone is slightly off colored Okay. Well, and I'm just gonna, uh, I guess, like, jostle them to the side so that she can get a look at the half full one and try to figure out what's in it. Like, All right. So it looks, it looks like it, you know, has a stopper like normal. You pop it open. And it's very old, very bad ale. <laughs> That's my book, this one. And she kind of stops, stops to back up. And, uh... and you see the other one is different markings on it and slightly different style of barrel. And the seal is still on it. It looks to be some sort of wine. Ooh. Well, it's probably wine then. Um, I... Okay, is Kithri actually here with her? Mm -hmm. And for okay. some reason, you're at negative 20 feet. So let me fix that. I don't know what I did. I did something. If you hold down Alt and use your mouse wheel, you can change your height. So, that's right, you're, uh, you're back to normal now. Yeah, control alt is my uh, push or talk button. So, Oof. I know what I did. <laughs> All right, so what are you doing with the wine? Anything? And the ale? Uh, Discussing uh... ale? <laughs> uh, it probably wouldn't uh, make too much sense to carry them around with us while we're exploring. So she kind of just makes a mental note to check back on that later. Uh, shall we head back? Yep, probably. And in case you didn't know what a barrel was, there you go. Not linked in this part in the Wow. Chat. Mm -hmm. Alright, so Kithri comes back out and then you see Genesis follow and as Genesis steps into the hallway you can now see the room is starting to color in mm -hmm. Wow well, Find anything of interest? Find a box of something that's not supposed to be rust, but is, uh, and two barrels. One looks like it has wine, and the other some ale. You might like the ale. <laughs> Alright. Old stuff. Meaning, probably not anyone that's recently around. Good no, to know. Defi definitely not recent. And, just with some arts moving forward. Um, as we get closer, especially as the light starts touching this tree, does this look living or like a living tree or like a a dead tree, essentially? Uh, they look. Give me this. Actually, I don't think you would need to check for that. Um, they look very old, but they do look like they're living. Okay, and these are like the roots coming out of the ceiling, right? Correct. The roots okay. going down through the ceiling and then down. It's more of a dirt rock mixture in this room. Noted. All right. Oh. And the uh, passage to the left goes down, and you see a large opening going steeply down. Looks like this continues for a while. 
I'm assuming the stuff on the ground is like more roots that are like under the surface. Just dirt. Or is it just out oh, dirt? Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Actually, real quick. I know we already stepped into the room and everything, but real quick glancing at the dirt war could can Tusk tell if there was any like previous cracks on this dirt patch um, coming or going um, through this area before us. I know we probably messed it up by our... What is your um, passive survival? Uh, 16. Yes. There are. Um, Okay. Uh, Both you and Genesis would notice drag marks leading to... um, it's hard to tell what direction they're going, but uh, the the markings go through this room and out. Okay. Yeah, Class will like point it out to the rest of our party. <laughs> there's a someone's been coming and going recently. What was that? An animal. Could be. Uh, Besides the drag marks, is there anything else that would indicate whether it was a humanoid or animal doing it? I don't know what it requested because nothing else was of investigation. Um, It was supposed to be that. There we go. (laughs) Okay. All right. What was your question, uh, Genesis? Uh, is there anything in the tracks that would indicate whether it was a humanoid or a animal doing it? She's mostly looking for footprints that are slightly heavier than the drag marks or something like that. All right, so I push your roll. So it looks to be some sort of large cat and or some sort of cloven hoofed animal. Mm. Goat, cow, deer. Well, it doesn't look human, so... We should at least be on the lookout for some sort of animal. Uh, Doesn't Mm -hmm. look like it's the carrion crawler, so... And both of you um, realize that it's been a while, months, maybe even a year, since anything's gone through this room. Made the tracks. Ah. Looking at the dust settled on top of the crates. Well... You might find something that has, um, well, maybe an undead something. And if the if the carrying crawlers um, are not just a unique existence down here, well, I just hope it's not a um, bigger hoofed monster. <laughs> well, I guess we'll find out. <sighs> Um, you guys- I would say with the rolls you guys made together, uh, they look to be traditional, well, for lack of a better metagamey word, they look to be medium creature. Okay. From the steps and the size, it's not like a huge, you know, cloven hoof. Um, mm-hmm. It doesn't even look like a large, like a horse size. Okay. All right. Okay, that makes lots better. All right. Well, only one way to go. Very true. I guess we could go back to but that's no fun. Well, 
unless things change, we should be coming back this way. We can check out the um, corners that we might have missed. Let me get back here. Oh, thanks for moving him. I was just about to move him next. <laughs> All right, Kithri, you staying up with him? Yeah, sorry. All right, and now for the magic of Fantasy Grounds. Are you guys ready? Are you ready? Oh. Is that a pathway? Hold on just a second. You shouldn't oh. it shouldn't stop. Hold on. <laughs> oh, I know why it does it. Oh, because God. of the um, the room ends there. So give me just a second to check something. Okay. Son of a come on. Behave, people. There it is. Ah, they're together again. All right, hold on. Stream eyes. Ink. It does. Okay. All right, so let me go ahead and do this. Delete. All right, now. You guys should be able to see. Yep. That thing to the left. Or is that a don't look at it? It's not. So I'm sorry, the what? Uh, so uh, the area to like the left of the room we're in is kind of all opened up. I don't know if that's like an actual room or just something that got erased on accident. I'm not seeing what you're talking about in either case. Um, uh, if you were to the left with Tusk, there is, we are seeing more room there. Oh, no! Don't worry, but that's nothing. Okay. I'm not sure why, because I'm looking at the line of sight right now. It looks like it's just still be there, <laughs> and it's not showing up on my stream or when I look at the player view. Weird. Weird. Oh, oh, we'll start going down the pathway. Oh, it's better now. Cool. Oh, beep, beep, beep. Oh. All right, and it is 825, so let's go ahead and take a quick five-minute break. And we'll be back here at 830, guys. Let me type it in the chat. chat. Oh, hey, TV Nomad. Welcome, welcome. Sorry, I did not see you. And you cheered. Holy crap. Awesome. Thank you, TV Nomad. I appreciate you very much. Uh, he also does a stream. Um, he does several during the day, actually. So I actually get to see several of his streams. Uh, did you do a shout out to him? There you go. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, so he does live. Um, he also has some unique uh, things that you can gift to his players and, or the monsters and stuff. So, and like I said, he's during the day, so he's at like uh, 10 or so. Um, and I know he does it at least the days I work. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, he does a couple of streams during that time frame. So I know he's doing Tales of the Dragon Queen, Horde of the Dragon Queen. So <laughs> awesome. Welcome, welcome. And I really appreciate the bits so much. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you. So, don't be afraid. Uh, Mantha, would you mind throwing the uh, wedge, wedge char 
on there so he can take a look. Uh, anybody else who's there as well? Um, thank you. So it's now been two minutes, so I'll see you guys at 8.32. Cool, yeah. See you then. All right, I am back. So thank you so much, TV Nomad. Hopefully you're still here. Let's see, you stopped by when? Uh, at 8 o'clock, man, it's been half an hour. Sorry, dude.
I will IM you as soon as I can uh, just to say hi because it's awesome that you stopped by. Hopefully you followed so you can catch my other streams. Those of you who didn't, just be aware Hello. it's there. There you go. Boom. All right. All right. So as we're waiting for everybody else to get back, so we're a minute early. Um, I do want to remind the players and the people watching. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube, come watch us live. Watch any of my streams. You can earn spend zone particles. You can then mess with the players, mess with the monsters, heal the players, heal the monsters, that type of thing. Magical surges, sound effects, lots of stuff you can do to interact. Um, and besides just watching. So don't forget to like, subscribe. And if you have Amazon Prime, you get a free Twitch subscription every month so if you haven't used yours yet and you like what you're seeing go ahead and subscribe thank you all right so it is time to get rolling again so you guys come down passageway slopes down a little bit um and again you're now in this uh, natural passageway well what you like to do you do see the drag marks continuing on occasion. It's more rocky here, but uh, you do see telltale signs of something having been drugged through here. I'm right. assuming from seeing the drag marks, we can uh, come up with a approximate size of what was being dragged. I think it was. It's been too long to really see. You just seem. If you weren't looking for them, you wouldn't have even noticed. Tusk, can I just make note of it and um, proceed forward? Um. All right, give me just a moment to catch up. All right. All right, so yeah, I'm actually going to put you back a little bit as you turn the corner. I think you guys have high enough perceptions and sight to see some stuff. Yeah, past perception of 16. Stop. Yeah. Uh... This is being 11. Okay. All right, so put yourself um, however you would be 10, 20, 30. All right, so Tusk, when you get to this point, let's see, you're 60 feet. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Yeah, so I, when you get to this point, put, uh, arrange yourselves. I just moved you moved you back quickly. So put yourselves in squares, however you would normally be coming around the corner here. Um, and then let me set this up. <laughs> this is going to be such a great picture for you guys All right. to see. Good. I love this picture. So cool. Like coming around the corner, like it looks like it um, opens up again ahead. As yeah, you probably have just made a comment like that. All right, so I'm just waiting for uh, Fancy Man to catch up. And we were worried about it being a dead end. Atrophy. Okay. All right. Um, 
So you are 10. Okay, so go ahead and move yourself up um, another 10 feet or so. Oh, sorry, it automatically locks it when I add things. Okay, try it again. All right, 10, 20, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 50, 60. All right, so you, Genesis and Tusky, both see something. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Your, your mind can't really even... see what it is sort of a, like a black dark blob um something but it's about five feet off the ground and it's a good 60 feet away from you 65 right at the, right at the end of your dark vision just this dark thing again it's about five feet off the ground but it's like a furry ball or a hairy ball it's, it's, you can't really tell what it is but something is there floating. We got something floating ahead, you guys. <laughs> that was a good pun. He didn't realize it, though. All right. Giant hairy meatball, maybe? I can't see it quite. And Tusk is going to start walking a little closer to try and get a better like look at this thing. Alright, and like, what is everybody's <laughs> passive stealth? Yeah. That's your stealth skill. That's, 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 so um, that's your stealth skill plus ten. I know Genesis you're in armor. But still twenty three. Your... Sixteen for me and okay. um twelve for crack. Okay. And Genesis. twenty three. Mine is fourteen. Alright, so um 16, 12, 20, okay. All right. So go ahead and move, everybody. Move, I'm going to move, move you guys up in line. Uh, at the moment, Tusk is trying to be deliberately, like, quieter with his steps. He knows he's, like, walking into a large cavern, but at the same time, he's not trying to be, like, heavy steps. Because he's he just confused. My life, though. All right. And so, as you're moving up, um, you're not sure if it heard something or if what caused it to do so but it turns around and faces you and your mind finally clicks what this is uh and in a way you sort of wish it it would still just not register what it is let me show you what you're looking at uh. Hmm. I mean, man, then I have a guess. I'm kind of hoping. Is it right? But, uh, what is it? What's your guess? Is it a beholder? It <laughs> oh no, beholders are much bigger. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, oh, it's one of these things. Huh. So, okay. Right. It sees you. And barks, and we have an issue. Oh. So, how can it bark? It doesn't have lungs. Magic. It uh, can't uh, float without wings. <laughs> we have so 
uh, real quick, throw this out here in case you guys are forgetting. We did fight something similar to this or this kind of thing a while ago um, while we were like close to Nashville after like a tremor. We had found like found in the ruins and I think then there was a tremor and we fell into a hole or we underground for a little bit. Um, that was ne- roughly near Nashville. Um, something that was a floating like wolf head like this um, a long time ago now, but uh, that, that did happen before. Thank you for the reminder. It seemed familiar, but I couldn't quite uh, place it. Yeah, freaked us out then too. <laughs> While we are figuring things out, Ben, has it been 10 minutes since the Sturges? I'm going to assume that it has been. Yes, because you guys fought the Chimera. I mean, the uh, carrying crawlers, Tusk had to clean himself off. You did your identity of the doll. Okay. Then went Uh, down a little side passage, searched out, and did your investigation of the barrels and stuff. Okay. I was making sure. So I took off Spirit Guardian. Maybe 15 minutes. Not much longer, but yes, your Spirit <laughs> Guardian took on. All right. Uh, let me check one other thing. I was trying to find. Right here. Okay. All right. Um. So, I apologize. Um, I misremembered. I could have sworn this thing was medium, um, but the tracks you saw were it would be it would have been a little bit larger. So, a smaller, large creature. Okay. Anyway, anyway. Uh, so, oh, the visage and owl. Okay, gotcha. Gosh, can't believe Sven would lie to us. I mean, totally <laughs> intentionally. <laughs> Fine, speed. What? <laughs> All right, waiting for fans to catch up. 30. Okay. And I just need to check to see if this is an action or something that just happens. All right. Then, so all of you need to do this for me. Let's see. Oh. oh boy. Fudge. <laughs> the only one who failed is not here. Oh. If you succeeded, all right. I'm sorry. It shouldn't have put it on you guys. Um, when it gets to your turn, I'll remove it when I get there. All right. So okay. as you look at this thing again, your mind just does not like what it's seeing. Uh, uh, dead wolves should stay dead. It's clearly not dead, and it's floating. And as it turns a corner, it sort of growls at you. Um, turns its head tilts its head a little bit it's just just too much for crack and he's frightened okay crack will protect you success (laughs) failure success 
right? Look. Um. While I wait for you to, uh, thanks for removing that, son. Um. Husk is going to, um, bonus action, uh, rage, and then as he just runs a couple away, wolf heads, really. Not true. It is only a couple wolf heads at the moment. <laughs> but wolves tend to pack, and we don't know what these guys do. But at the moment, only two. So I can always. Come back to that. I actually have something else I can use my bonus action for. 10, um, 20, 30, 40, 50. Yeah, I'm going to make my attacks first. And I'm not going to rage yet. And I will reckless. Um, let's say I already have one. one. Yeah, it should be fine. Reckless. I was mocking you. I was not suggesting anything. No, that's true. <laughs> um, but, you know, on second thought, I actually want to use my bonus action for something else for this round. Um, by a reckless great master attack with my this wolf head right here. Hit. Glad you had advantage. Uh, reckless. Yeah, I know, but that was a two. Yep. And I'll make my second attack. Roll stuff first. Nice. Um, and then for my bonus action, I'm actually going to do second wind instead of rage. Because hmm. I am a bit hurt. Wow. I'm heal a little bit. So Tusk kind of like runs up. Um, and makes two um, kind of slashes on this um, fl floating wolf head. Um, kind of get like it's like a gouge on like the side of the snout, and then um, kind of more cleanly um, chops the bottom. Um, anything that was like dangling, it's no longer kind of there, along with probably a thin layer. <laughs> um, as he kind of comes up, as kind of. Um, like doing his like a deliberate kind of um, paced breathing as he kind of shakes off some of the blood loss from his head um, and kind of round things out. I'm going to try and sidestep here if possible um, to kind of open up a little space um, if I can kind of get around them. All right. So typically you wouldn't be able to. You have plenty. You just have movement. To go straight south and then over, but because this is just a floating head, yes, I'll let you do that. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so and that will way, be my it's just a of turn. Semantics, so that in the future when you guys try to move Diagonally through an enemy, you can't say, "Well, you let him do it before." Anyway, get three. You're up. Hmm. <laughs> Well, floating heads, honestly, it's like a toss-up whether my attack would be best used attacking this one or attacking that other one, oh, because sorry. like on the other one, I won't get my sneak attack damage, but this one's like already very hurt, but whatever. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. So I'm going to attempt to stab it with my ice pick. Looks like it automatically applied my sneak attack. Yep, it sure did. Go ahead and roll. Wham. All the dice. All the dice. Mm -hmm. It had four hit That's points, four. guys. <laughs> And four hit points. Two, three, four, uh, okay. Um, magic. I'm kind of imagining as like Kithri runs up and eight, starts flowing a little lower because like really hurts, and, and she just kind of school. like jumps okay. up and like stabs through the t um, head, like pins it to the ground before like pulling it out. So it's just now on the ground. 
Anyway. Alright, so it whimpers a little bit. So it gives <laughs> this sad eyes as it crumbles to the ground. Do not try to make us feel like this is something that we should try to make our pets <laughs> spend. It's literally just a floating wolf head. You know I will adopt things, but please don't. <laughs> the doggy eyes, and but only the head. All right. Anything else? I was trying to. Th I was thinking about trying to hide behind Tusk, but there might be other enemies which uh, have not yet been revealed. So uh, she is probably I'm not gonna do that. I might take this to be a... Blink. Okay. All right, so Tusk, you have been given a boost of healing by CITC. Teeter in the chat. Uh, Mantha. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and give me a 1d8 plus 5, please. Five. Thank you, Mantha. <laughs> plus, I, plus 5. She yeah. said in the Twitch chat, I'm just going to read it because it's funny. Uh, when the healer decides to heal via Twitch instead of, you know, actually healing. <laughs> uh, close as I'll get. <laughs> right? She's gotta use her sword and stab stuff. You know? No, no, it's perfect. Healing you takes an action. Why would I waste that on you? Oof. <laughs> <laughs> You know, one of these days, I do want to play a cleric that just can't heal. Just like, mm -hmm. there are some good damage cleric spells, like, there are. Yeah. I just want them to be a brat about it. Mm -hmm. <sighs> They're like, oh, you're a cleric, why heal me? I'm like, no, I do that. All right, so um, there is another enemy that you have not seen yet. And it makes itself known. And this is one of the niftier pictures I've seen in a while. Oh. That and is a good picture. And that is... That is actually really nifty. <laughs> yeah, it's super cool. Cool, I don't want it to be. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is... um. Whoa. That's a sight. <laughs> Alright, and it's coming towards you guys. Shift, 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 shift. There we go. Alt five, ten, twenty, It goes down in the, to the southwest uh, as it comes loping up. You do notice it um, doesn't take a detective to figure out this is what was leaving the tracks. And it breathes. <laughs> Oh, I didn't say that in Discord. Out at uh, this little lion head comes, and this stench black cloud comes wafting over Tusk and Kithri. 
I had a feeling when Sven said, huh, those tracks could be hoof prints. Be cat tracks. And I'm like, huh. Oh, those are pretty different, huh? Yeah. I didn't catch the cat tracks earlier. <laughs> yeah, he, he, yeah. All right, and this, as this breath, it, it's not just the smell; it's the burning of the eyes, uh, and and the the stinging on the flesh and stuff as this stuff just sort of seeps into you, um, and it burns, and uh, you can feel this, your skin just drying up uh, and chafing away under your armor. Uh. Oof. Do you know how hard I tried to moisturize checking rude? <sighs> One, twenty, thirty. Hmm. All right, and then coming down around the corner is another wolf. This one, um, so let me check something to see. All right, so all of you have been, you're as used to the sight of it as you're gonna get. Uh, you don't have to keep saving as far as that's concerned. But this one lets out this howl. Hmm. Ten, Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> succeeded, <laughs> and uh, it just resonates and, and it keeps going up and higher and higher into a register that you shouldn't be able to hear, and it just hurts to to hear this the sound that it gives out. And again, part of your mind is like, how is it even able to howl? Because there's no lungs, there's nothing there. It shouldn't be able to do this. And it just hurts for you to think about it. Mm -hmm. Alright, so Craig is frightened, but frightened is not as bad as people might think. Simply means yeah. you cannot get closer to it, and you have disadvantage if you're going to try to attack it. So, what would question. Craig like to do? Well, question. The thing that actually frightened him is dead, so is he still frightened? Oh. That is correct. He, he, it is dead. Uh, let me check one other thing. Okay. All right, so he is still would still be vulnerable then. So let me 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. He's, he is within range of this one. Um, Genesis is 10, 20, 30. He can't see anything. So, no, he's not frightened right this second. You are correct. Moved. Okay. Um, looking at his spells and abilities. Um... He's pretty straightforward. The only thing that's different is... Uh, if he does an acid spell, as far as I know, the only acid spell he has is Chromatic Orb. He gets a plus one damage to it. Um, other than that, everything else is pretty self-explanatory. Um, Witch Bolt, he can upcast, so that's why there's so many of them. And that's mm -hmm. pretty much it. He's going to... Um... Seeing the uh, 
Chimera. He can't. He can't see. He Chimera. cannot see beyond Tusk. Right, because he has light. Sorry, I had him selected and like the figure showed up, so I thought I could see. But yeah, no, it gets dark. Um, in that case, he's going to try and move up a little bit to see a little bit more about what's going on in the battle. Um, All right, so when that happens, he sees the other two wolves. Wolf. All right. Um, so give me just a second. Okay. Yay! Oops. Oh. All right. So he sees the one. It's like, ah, no big deal. I've seen that before. Looks at the other one, and it's just, the wounds on this one are just okay. This is just too okay. much, and now he's frightened again. Yeah. Um. In that case, um, so he's scared again, and there are a lot of scary things. So he's going to try and make something less scary and cast polymorph on the chimera, uh, trying to turn it into a bunny. Um. So let's see if it works. Um. Save. On Chimera. Yeah. Failure. <laughs> All right, and so if you would drop that in the chat, please. All right. Yep. Will do. <laughs> All right, so any beast within equal to or less than a target's challenge rating, yep. what would you like it to be? Bunny. I'm going to choose a challenge rating zero bunny. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if there's actually a stat block or not for that. Um, but... Not, that's what came to mind. That harmless little bunny. <laughs> um. All right. So, what else is he going to do, uh, or is there anything else he can do? I do not believe so. And real quick, just want to make sure I get these on right. Um. Polymorph concentration effect on onto me. Um, there's another polymorph effect under here that doesn't have like self or anything next to it. Is that something supposed to go onto the target? Um, Let me look at it. I see what you're talking about. Hold on. Yeah, because it has like polymorph self, and then there's a po another polymorph effect. I'm going to actually real quick click off that spell slot before I forget. Oop. There we go. What level is it? Uh, fourth level. Yes, so the polymorph C that goes on it, yes. Got it. So I will do that real quick. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't have anything else on there. Okay. Um, Sweet. Um, then I'll leave out of that. Um, and... All right, so I'm just going to do this. Give me just a moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to have you put it on the rabbit. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. That's... Turn him into a flea, a harmless little <laughs> flea. Put that flea into a box, and I'll put that box into a bigger box. And then I will mail that box to myself. Perfect. And then when that box arrives, I will smash it with a hammer. I think that was the reference. White or black? White. All 
I'm going to go ahead and use the POG instead of just the token because the token is really small and hard to see. POG is still pretty small, but that's okay. All right, so here's the rabbit. See the Give me a four sider, please. Uh, there we go. Four. Mm -hmm. All right, there you go. There's your rabbit. Yep. Next round, it comes up the tusk, and tusk just punts it and it turns back to. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you never know. All right, oh, yeah, do you need anything else? Nope, he's. That's all he's going to do. <laughs> all right, Jen, right. need a couple rolls from you. Let's start with... Mm -hmm. That one. Um, I didn't put a DC on it, but it's DC 17. Well, uh... And then I need a... This one. It's DC 13, uh, 14. <laughs> Also didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Oh, what else? All right. What would you like to do? Can I use Lucky on that? Yeah, you can use Lucky on that. I'm going to do it on... Do the nature one because even though it's harder, I'm better at it. Nature. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and say it instead of uh, typing it all out to you. Um, there are two main breeds of Chimera. This type of Chimera is a more older. Um, you thought they were extinct. The newer Chimera has a dragon head latched onto it. So... Cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, by the way, quick, quick interlude. Uh, Roberta says there should be a "What's the wife doing for five thousand points?" <laughs> Use that during the. Oh, Sven gal is lurking. Like... Okay, I was like wondering who's lurking. Yeah, my chat is all messed up, so I, I, I'm missing a lot that's going on in the chat, and Mantha is failing to tell me what's going on. So. She right, she's 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 on the ball, yeah, and responding, but she's not telling me. So, I can't. so anyway, yeah. But you should never have thought that I would be reliable. That was your first mistake. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. Um, we are back. Uh, this must be a cat with a heart on its head. Brianna, nineteen love. Okay. Oh no, well, that's hopefully, a little Kirby. Hopefully, uh, oh, it's a Kirby. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Squirrel. Uh, all right, Genesis. What you, uh, you so yeah, this, the Chimera. So this is uh, the newer Chimeras. Um, Chim. Look like this. They have, like I said, a dragon head. And don't have a snake tail. 
Mm -hmm. um, so you're not just a little blip blip of information. You have heard about these, but again, like I said, you thought they were extinct. That's cool. I mean, like, really solidifies the idea that, like, this place hasn't been touched in ages. That's cool. <laughs> Alright, so what would you like to do? Well, first, she, uh, congratulates Crack on the good spell usage. Let's be... So she, uh, kind of I guess, like, not quite pushes past them, but kind of does in the I'm getting past you way. And as she's passing by, she's like, nice one, Crack. Just for the record, don't hit the rabbit. <laughs> uh, not pointing that at somebody, but definitely pointing that at somebody. Uh, what is your passive insight? Nineteen. Yeah, so you can tell he's terrified. He's shaking a little bit. Uh, his, his eyes are really wide. He managed to cast his spell, but he is not liking this wolf. Nope. Anyway, you said you passed by. I don't see you move. Did you move? I did not move. I was saying okay. it first. And she kind of pauses, looks back and forth, and then uh, goes right to stab at the wolf. And that is my 30 feet. She's right there. So there are little ledges. They do go up a little bit, but they're talking a couple feet. So it's not really, there's no real change in elevation uh, as you're looking at the floor, what those black things are. Uh, okay. And we all know Jen loves to stab things. So she's going to do that. She's going to poke at this guy. And we're going to roll that again to see if she does crit damage. She does. So she uh, runs up and I think maybe like stumbles a little bit on the ledge and it just kind of pushes her sword forward uh, just a little bit deeper into the wolf than she had intended to. Uh, and she, as she does that, she's looking at it, but also looking at the ground behind it as she goes ahead and casts a spiritual a weapon uh, behind it. <laughs> yeah, so we are going to do spiritual weapon. And because uh, she's worried about the Chimera, we're going to upcast that to level 4 so it does an extra 1d8 of damage. So, uh, Jen is distracting the wolf by, uh, stabbing its face, uh, quite literally. <laughs> and while it is distracted, this glowing, like, uh, I forgot what it is, like a hammer mace? Mall hammer, that's it. Um, okay. appears behind it and tries to play baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, 
and fails. She got the height wrong. But it's fine, it's fine. But that is her turn. She got a good stab in. She got a good spell in. She's feeling good. Alright, so as you run by all the bleeding people, the head now gets his turn. And this one is... Let me take a look. All right, so this this guy is going to uh, let me see. <coughs> okay, good. I wasn't sure I could be heard. All right, um, you guys can hear me, correct? Hello, hello. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so the wolf. Started this whole mess. She's. Uh, what is her intelligence, by the way? Okay. So this thing is also going to howl. Click. Ah. Uh. Well, <sighs> never gonna a reaction. succeed on this save. Uh. <laughs> Alright, so um, that, that's the one you hit, by the way. The, the one you hit does that. Oh, rude. And he does that. Um, that's, it's actually a reaction. So as you hit it, it howls. This guy next between you behind you is gonna move on up and sort of uh sniff Genesis hair. Gross. And then try to take a bite. One of these years, I'm going to find out what the code is to type so I can get rid of that those big saving throw indicators. It automatically does it when you move on, but uh, there is a way I can type it. I just don't remember what it is ever, so I'll figure it out one day. One of these days. But if you're wondering why I keep jumping back and forth between players, that's why every once in a while I want to clear it before the end of the turn. So he's biting you. Oof. Um... <laughs> I think Jen's... What happened? I'm gonna insult it. There it is. It took a little while. If it is not too late to do so. You mean... Cutting words? Uh, yes. Alright, go ahead and roll your... Roll your roll. Oh no, I don't have anything prepared. Um, gosh, I always forget. It's a D8 now, right? I think it is. I don't know. Oh, I can look at my bardic inspiration. Okay, it is a d8, so we're going to roll that, and I also have an ability that lets me roll twice and take the better one. Okay. I think she turns and she's like, oh, I think you've got mange! And, uh, she that that's 
I think she's just kind of like, oh, get away from me. I heard one oh, this that's week. Not intended. Oh. That is awesome. I've been meaning, I'm waiting to save it for the right moment, but although this doesn't quite fit, I love it. It's, and it was anybody who has ever loved you was wrong. Oh my God. <laughs> That's a good one. I'm stealing that. It's very harsh, but I love it. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it was anybody who ever loved you was wrong. All right, so that is enough <laughs> to uh make it miss as it's trying to look and see if it has mange and it's spinning in a circle. <laughs> 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 Alright, Genesis, top around two. Oh. Well. I also heard not quite as good, but uh, you are the human equivalent of a participation award. Oh. oh. I mean, I've heard like your parents are too uh are a living proof that two wrongs don't make a right, but that was good. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, Jen, thoroughly intrigued by how this thing is still screaming with, even while her sword was in its throat, decides to stab it again, because that'll help, right? Can't scream at me if it's dead. Cat loves the knocking over man's mic. It's her favorite thing to do. <laughs> she does it a lot. Uh, <laughs> mm. Oh, and she misses. Woof. <laughs> that was not supposed to be a pun. <laughs> Stop was, laughing. <laughs> <laughs> that is getting a pun counter on the Twitch. Um, oh no. <laughs> Jen is uh, too intrigued and she's like, huh, maybe if I like look at it while I'm stabbing it, I'll see something. And she just misses. And the mall hammer decides to try to play baseball again. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, so go ahead and click next if you're done. Hits. That's what? a hit, though. There you go. Boink. It has already used its reaction, so it cannot howl again. It's like medium damage. I got vulnerable to force damage. Wow. Sorry. Uh, baseball works. I think. I think this time it tried doing softball, and that was better. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Crick, what you gonna do? If you correct, want to is, real quick, uh, since you would understand this, I think, uh, without going to all the details, which bolt to me is, is way underpowered and, and would, shouldn't be used as written. So, mm -hmm. the longer he casts it and keeps concentrating on it, the more it's damaged. There is an, an extra damage dice added, um, so that's why. Uh, so that's why he not only has it for every level, but also it says R1, R2, R3. That, that indicates which round it is. So uh, uh, okay, that's what all those are. So if you want to do Witch Bolt, he also has a sorcerer. So don't forget his sorcerer points. He can. He has a couple of them. Um, True. So, he could. Okay. Well, I think for now he's going to try and keep concentration on Polymorph. Okay, and... by the way, he did not get a save for the last one, so let me go. So, if you're doing something that's worried, that's worried about the Frightened, you can wait. Otherwise, go ahead and take your turn, and I'll find it and apply it to him to see if he saved last turn. Okay. Well, um, he's actually going to do something very simple and um 
cast magic missile, um, creating uh, just at first level, creating you know these three little um, electric looking um, bolts of force, um, kind of like right in front of him, and he's gonna fling one at. It, yeah, he can still. Uh, yeah, one at the uh, noticeable biggish, and then two at the floating wolf head. Um, which doesn't actually require a attack roll or anything. They just hit. So before you roll damage, are you? Is he? He's doing it at level one. Yep, uh, just at level okay. one. And so for the three things, are they all going to do the same damage, or are you going to roll for each one? You get to pick. I like rolling, so I'll roll for each one. All right. All right. So this is going to do the one that goes to the noticeably biggish, and then I'll do the two for the other one. Did it roll? Did I not roll? There it goes. Nice. Um, and then there go the other two. One, two. I like to think as he um, releases this spell, he's kind of comfortable with sending out, even though he's afraid, as it kind of like impacts and um, takes down one that Jen had already, um, you know, been working on. Um, it kind of boosts his confidence a little bit, and he uh, kind of gets over his. Um, Right of these floating, disgusting um, wolf heads. Um, Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> and he's not going to move that. Nice. <laughs> he I, just I, gets a little more confident in, in his um, standing there, I guess. <laughs> until another one helps. All right, Tusk. All right, Tusk is going to. Um, run up and um, attack this other floating head that's still here. And do his usual uh, reckless Great Weapon Master attacks. Um, I am going to rage now because he's probably going to have to no. Well, no. I'll rage now. Because uh, why not? Um, realize I did not click this off earlier, so I'm just going to click that off now. Um, so I'm going to real quick do my applying of effects. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, turn that on, turn that off. And... So, you went with the more traditional route um, because you're, you had to pick from the player's handbook and stuff. If your eyes are ever curious about some of the newer stuff one of the uh newer barbarian peep things is the wild surge barbarian i don't know exactly what it's called but wild magic barbarian something like that anyway uh -huh. when he goes into a rage you roll on a table of uh, a wild surge table of eight different effects mm -hmm. one of them is he makes a either a flump or a pixie appear and then it explodes at the end of the round and the damage <laughs> to everything within five feet of it. You can do that every turn. But the coolest one that I got to use the other day finally showed up is his weapon turns into a weapon of force and he can then throw it and it'll return to him and it does pure force damage. So I had this two-handed greatsword that I was chucking at people within th up to 30 feet away slamming into them it would come back to my hand and i'll throw it again it was pretty cool a lot of fun she sounds pretty cool um that's fun well with my more traditional barbarian he, he kind of like um eyeing the rabbit kind of knowing what's going to be coming um here shortly kind of um you know preps himself and kind of draws upon that well of anger that he uh, he's kind of learned to just draw on rather than let him control him and he kind of like um whacks this um floating wolf head kind of um tilting it and then in his uh 
back sw- swing. Uh, he just kind of like hits it right in the center, and as the thunderous energy kind of like goes along it, as he goes into like through the head like midway, just kind of explodes, um, kind of up and down just around the area as he just kind of goes through. Probably gets on Jed. <laughs> Ew. Um. Well, it's not bug guts. <laughs> Hmm. And then he kind of like eyes the uh, rabbit, waiting for what's going to come next. Um, yeah, that's my go. Uh, that's my three things, and I'm just going to stand right there next to the angry little rabbit. <laughs> well, not sure how angry it is, but we'll see. All right, so it also just immediately just falls to the floor, collapses, and you see it's a a lot of the stuff around it is, is just sort of atrophies, and and the hair curls up, uh, and all that's left on the floor is a cracked skull. All right. Um, I think Tusk might have caved in that skull. Let's be honest. That's 15 <laughs> minute points above his. Uh... Right, so you do get an opportunity to attack if you wish to take it. Seeing the other enemies. Down and the fact that he is in a rage. Yeah, he'd probably take it. <laughs> so I'm going to say you're going to have a minus two just because this thing is so small. Okay. The rabbit is so um, tiny. And it has an armor. Uh, and I don't think you can miss anyway, but go ahead and just roll an attack. All right. Do, 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 do. Because it's a rabbit. <laughs> well, with that, not twenty. <laughs> Oof. Um. All right. So well, go ahead let's hope put, the damage spills over. I don't think it does. Put the uh, minus two because the rabbit had two hit points. Okay. In the um, in the modifier, and then roll the damage because any excess damage goes to the original target. <laughs> oh my. Um. Uh, all right. Um. Here, I'll real quick make sure I have the modifier stuff right, because it was a crit. Um, it should roll all the crit stuff automatically. Will it if I'm rolling it on a different target? Yep, because right. it still shows as a crit. Um, all right, well, I lied. Uh, <laughs> so... Oof. That's just weird. All right, so I don't know if it will do the... Um, here, we're going to do it this way. You can go ahead and I go can... to your um, where it says options. The little symbol um, up where we're up in the top right. You know what I'm talking about? Options, yep. Go to dice manual entry on. Dice manual entry on. Okay. And then make an attack against the Chimera. Um, attack roll or damage? Just attack An roll. Attack roll, and okay. then p- and put a twenty in there, and then turn it off. The uh, the uh, dice manual entry on. Just because you're an orc, you have all your special stuff. So this way, we know for sure it's going to work with Sweet. great weapon mastery and orcness and all that other stuff. So now do the damage. Right. Turn that back off and roll damage. Do do do. There we go. Oh, uh, minus two. <laughs> 44. <laughs> do, do, do. All righty. Uh, not, not, not a terrible roll. Not no, terrible. Uh, nothing <laughs> below a four, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So 
that was your opportunity attack. So it goes to run away, gets hit. So I'm going to say it took 10 feet of its movement away. Um, but that was, it's still its turn. So. Mm -hmm. uh, real quick, I just remembered I have the fact that it goes off when I crit something. I'm hearing critical. So it has to make yeah. a real quick con save. Um, I always forget about this, but usually they're dead. And there's a success, so never mind. <laughs> usually they're dead. I mean. <laughs> So, never mind. Continue. All right. And it can do that. Boom, boom, boom. Um, let's see. So, it's going to. All right. I'm looking at its intelligence. All right, so it doesn't like you, so it's going to breathe on you, mm -hmm. which will happen to get Genesis as well. Thanks, Tusk. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right, just making sure I had you selected correctly. Woot, woot. Yay, we're good at con. All right, so, and then it's going to, to the, uh, as the goat head spews out this gross bile stench, the snake head whips up and tries to bite you. Okay. Wow, two twos <laughs> oh. is a miss. <laughs> Sad day. I mean, okay. good. <laughs> hmm. Sven's like, this right. creature has so many fun things to do, mm. but it can't <laughs> hit you. <laughs> I want right. to hurt you. It like just miscalculates the distance, so it just like stops uh, like a couple inches away from Tusk. <laughs> At like okay, the so end of its like length. Get three probably keeping in mind that its breath can only go in one direction. It's going to run over here and flank it. Flank it. Would I get a plus one from flanking over here, Mr. Yes, Swan? Awesome. I'm going to try to stab it. So again, this is considered a large creature, but it's a small large creature um, mm. because it's somewhat emaciated and it's not quite as you know bulky and big as a normal, even a normal lion would be. It makes me kind of sad. All right. Roll the dice. Oh, the dice. Oh, the dice. Now you do damage. Woot. That's um, a good damage. Like... Yeah, no, I've been rolling real good on my dice rolls for sneak attack. Uh. Yeah, no, there's that. Really too much else. I mean, I could step. Those bees are new. Can I feel anything behind me? No. We did not sense anything else in this. And room. I moved 25, so feet, 25 feet so far, correct? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay. I'm going to move back into the darkness. <laughs> Alright, go ahead and click next when you're finished. Wow. <laughs> it's my turn wow. again. Back to you. 
I'm going to move back up and stab it again, or at least try. He's like, hmm, I didn't poke it hard enough. Let me just uh, come back. And <laughs> up. You're just coming back to poke like the other butt cheek? Yep, basically. <laughs> I did not target it. I'm a dummy. I'm sorry. Thank you. That is a hit. I have to apply sneak attack to myself, right? Yes. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh. I did not. I did not have to apply sneak attack to myself. Would you like oh. me to reroll the damage? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, just check real quick. Doesn't say anything about a sneak attack. Okay, we'll so I'm gonna to give time. it to myself again, and then I'm gonna roll again. Okay, that's better. Oh my goodness, ones and twos. So, <laughs> Oof. Okay. okay, eight on the you know regular damage. Yeah, that's true. So I stab mm -hmm. it again, and then I kind of like think about it, and I'm like, uh, maybe I'll stay here. So Tusk gets the plus one too. You know, he's pretty reckless, uh, but um, with his attack, <laughs> so he <laughs> does actually miss sometimes. <laughs> How dare right. you? Go ahead and click next when you're done. And it is Tusk himself. The well. one, the only. Uh, just from uh, Kithri's role earlier. Uh, yeah, Tusk will, you know, look it up and, you know, up and down and try and uh, <laughs> recklessly attack it again <laughs> with a plus one for flanking. Thank you, Kithri. <laughs> And here we go. Oh, nice thing. Dodged in that one. Yep, that is very nice. <laughs> but very mint. Well, actually, I luckily get a reroll at those. So Whooped. more damage, damage than would have. Yep. And do my second attack. And I'll do my second attack here. Yes, I do not really have anything to do with the bullets. So, yeah, Tusk will just kind of, kind of like squares off with it and then kind of um, takes a slice at one, um, like on the side of one of the heads and then brings his axe around and takes a, you know, another, uh, like, you know, slice at the other. The VR has kind of like matching wounds on both sides of its heads, of you know, it's two heads right there, right there, <laughs> as he's kind of squaring off. Um, don't have you know what? I'm gonna have action search <laughs> and actually take two more attacks. Whooped. Um, because why not? Wow, two and a four. Wolf. That's nice. What? Don't forget, you do get plus one. True, but uh, I don't that, think I'm... that isn't required. But that's not required. <laughs> I don't think it would have helped the first time, and this time it's not required. <laughs> but you do get a second crit. Wow. Mm. Wow. As my computer takes a second to load, all the damage. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um. Yeah. So like it does the two. Um, kind of, like, slices and then um, tries to, like, do another heavier strike in the middle, but, like, misses the first time, and he just kind of uses that momentum to, like, spin his axe in a huge circle to bring it down. A second time to kind of, like, sever it. Um, sever, like, the part right, right between the two heads, so it kind of, like, splits apart there, kind of um, live what falls limp. <laughs> Unless something else happens. Hmm. I'm a fan of beheading. Technically, I didn't beheaded. I just 
made these uh, Siamese twins a little less Siamese twins. <laughs> 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 All right, so as this thing shudders and, and falls, you guys are out of combat. As silence falls in this cavern once more. I guess as combat falls, I'm going to take off my rage and such. Jen, intrigued, heads over to the Chimera, because she's like... And I think she is, like, muttering out loud, like, I didn't know any of these still existed. Well, I guess they don't know. (laughs) (laughs) She, she, like, tries to hide the laugh with the cough, but, like, does not succeed. (laughs) (laughs) Like, out of some sort of respect to the animal, but no, no, she just laughs at it. Um, (laughs) Kithri doesn't laugh at it. Uh... I mean, um, considering that I thought they were extinct, and, uh, in the real world, normally things are uh, hunted to extinction to for something <laughs> of value. Is there something particular about these chimeras that is that you can't get in other places? And in Give simpler me terms, a <laughs> survival check um, and a nature check. Mm-hmm. I feel like Crack might be interested in an extinct somewhat magical creature as well. Mm. Um, so he probably would try to assist in any knowledge thing that Jen is trying to do. Uh, is At least trained in either one? Um, as I check his skills, um, he's trained in history? <laughs> Proficient in survival, aren't you? Uh, no, crack. Oh, crack, okay. Passes uh, so Crack can roll an Arcana. Okay. I'll give that to you real quick. Uh, as I make sure he's active. And that did not actually land in the dice tower. It just rolled across my screen. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. I hate it when that happens because those ones are always high. And you're like... <laughs> So that's no. where my high roll. Honestly, went. a lot of the time they're low for me, so I'm like, oh. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, I'm nice. <sighs> All right, so Crack is able to determine this thing was a zombie. Oh. oh. The Chimera was. Um, <laughs> the uh, wolf heads are its own brand um, of undead. Uh. So to answer your question, that means here it is, harvest. Loot. Mm. Alright, so there's claws and horns that you can get. There's also poison from the snake. Hey guys. Claws and horns are are very, very easy um, because most of the muscles and tendons and things are gone. Mm -hmm. Um, The horns would be the hardest thing to to, to try to get out, but again, they're so old and brittle. I mean, the the skull itself is, so you could easily remove them if you want. I I, I, I don't see why we wouldn't. Yeah, go ahead. Would you? I don't know why it's not working. Mm-hmm. God. What? There you go. So those two are in the combat tracker. And then uh, do you want to just try to get the poison? Uh, I'm not sure if I have a container for them. So, crowdsourcing. Does anybody have something to, I don't know, hold poison in? 
have an empty vial on me from a potion I drank a while ago. Ooh, you want to uh, share with the party? <laughs> Go ahead. And I will subtract my empty vial that I actually had listed oh. in my inventory. <laughs> well. Okay. Um, so go ahead and give me, so this will be at advantage because you have a couple people who are helping you. Um, it will be a survival check. And uh, this thing's a pretty big snake, um, so it's going to be an easy survival check, but depending on how high you go is how many uses you get. So it's going to be a DC 10. Survival check, and then we'll see how many uses you get of this poison. Well, oh my gosh! Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Whoa! Does so that count pretty. for extra? <laughs> Double so net you, you, get, you get one for every five over ten. So that's four plus because I got you got twenty. I'll give you two more. So you have six uses. Um, it is a DC fourteen Constitution saving throw, and it does ninety nine D six poison damage, or half as much. Wow! This is serious stuff. But sadly, never got it to bite missed Tusk when it tried to bite him. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't get to the poison damage. Mm -hmm. I, I think he oh, saves no. against poison damage okay. anyway. I think he's yeah. resistant to poison too. One right, raging so, and resistant to pretty much everything. Um, and the way this poison works for me is you, you apply it and you can use it um, as long as you use it before your next long rest. So, uh, is it a single it. use? Po yeah. Yes. Poison is single use. Yep. You can use it on other items. And by the way, Kithri, I'm, or Ashley, I'm going to give Kithri, yeah. eventually there are sling bullets that the Romans used that have a, that had a, um, they were stone with this horror board in the center of it. And when you, shoot it, use it uh, from a sling, it creates this whining noise. It's a whistling noise. Um, and it um, is very scary. So mm -hmm. when you give those to you so you can frighten people uh, <laughs> as you use these things. Uh, and it's also it's like a... Uh, it just makes me think um... of like those nerf darts. Yes. The <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, so, anyway, mm -hmm. uh, so I will add that to my notes to make sure I add this poison to the party sheet. So next week you guys can decide who or who you want it. Um, so real quick, like, um, we only have a few minutes left, but I think there's time. What did you guys, what did you guys want? Where did you want to go? What did you want to do? Um, so it looks like. This half of the cavern down here ends, but can't see the rest of the cavern up above. So once Jen is ready, or while Jen's kind of doing her stuff and Tusk isn't helping her, he'll probably be kind of looking that way to see if anything's coming. Um, and then once we're done, he'll be kind of like, uh, let's see how much farther this chamber up ahead goes, if it ends or not. So to the southeast, where the chimera came from, you see this big pile of just dirt and dust and stuff. Um, it looks like this thing had been laying there for quite a while. Um, and so as it rose up and walked out towards you guys, there's an imprint, almost perfect imprint of where it came from as it oh. stood up hmm. and is, was now awakened. Um, and then you guys move forward to the north. Okay. Undead guards have been here for a while. <laughs> I will say that we have not looked at the wolf heads yet. Um, I'm sorry, you haven't looked at what? Do you want to look at the wolf heads? Yet, to in terms of looting things, I, I don't uh, know. The wolf heads are, are like I said, they are once them there, they die, they deteriorated mm -hmm. and are just uh, very brittle mm -hmm. skulls. Some of them probably uh, cracked and broke 
as they hit the ground from where they were floating even. Okay. Magic was the only thing made sustaining them. Okay. So you see... Uh, you should be able to see what you can see. It looks like there are bodies up here to the left, and it continues to the right. Does that continue? Yeah, that continues to the No, it does not. Right? It ends. Oh, it does end? Ah, uh, it does. Okay. It just gave the illusion that it continued. Okay. <laughs> um, looks like there's a coffin up here. There's... Nope, that's not a coffin, that's a rock. Um, <laughs> Coffin-shaped rock. <laughs> yeah, but there's some bodies over here to the left. See, is what you get for not having light. <laughs> yep. <laughs> wow, so colorful. Mm-hmm. All right, and so you do see several bodies up here. Uh, you do see a bunch of um, fungus. And things you recognize them, Genesis. Um, actually, these are sort of, I don't know, I'll give you, let's get a roll from you too. Oh no. Survival, nature. Tusk, are you trained in nature as well? Um, no, I'm trained in, I think, only survival. Yeah, I'm only trained in survival. Or for those two nature type skills. So, no on nature. I mean, considering this is. Okay, yeah. Oof. Have roles. I'm using my inspiration on that. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it was better. Oh okay. my gosh. I was going to laugh so hard if that was another that one. Okay. <laughs> uh it's just meant to be that we don't know. Still meant to so be, but like... I have an inspiration that's going to go away. So we're going like to use it? Yeah, yeah, it's going to be gone anyway if you don't use it. Yeah, she's going to use it for So the... did you want the nature then, since that's the easier one? Yeah, well, I mean... Yeah, we'll do the nature one. All right, go ahead oh. and re-roll it. The nature is 12. So Vanus inspires you. To know your shit. (laughs) Be better at this! Alright, you don't know for sure, but you were very close. You know that you can eat these mushrooms, and they do something, you still don't remember what they do. Hey, Tusk, wanna eat a mushroom? (laughs) (laughs) And that's where we'll leave it, guys. (laughs) Um, I don't want to push you guys later than than normal. Um, But yes, you find a bunch of bodies. And some edible mushrooms. Edible question mark mushrooms. Um, you know, he, the point. What I'm trying to just to clarify. You know, they won't. They aren't poisonous, but they do affect you somehow. You don't remember how. Does that make more sense? Yes. Okay. Um, <sighs> the that uh, double twenty really uh, took all the luck from the rest of the rolls. <laughs> Just kind of sapped the rest of it up and like did not leave any for the rest of us. Um, as a side thing that has nothing to do with what we've been doing so far, for Tusk, um, from, due to his like wounds from the last session, he's missing part of an ear. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, so like just the top of his like right ear is just kind of missing, and he has a new haircut with new, you know. Scars that report so like he just has like strips cut like not like just at like a weird angle like kind of like takes out his ear but like he just has you know, random like like lines that just where his hair is just gone. <laughs> I it's know a weird look. Track of this stuff, but one of these days, you know those like body schematics that you might get at like the doctor, like show where on your body your pain is. Or whatever. I want to see one of those with, oh yeah, where are all of Tusk's scars? Oh, he's missing an ear there, and there's well, um, cut off the shoulder. And... I could actually fill that out for you at some point. <laughs> but if you're ever curious for how he actually looks with most scars, I generalize some things. I do have a note that is public that is Tusk's appearance. I know you do. There's just that I, I, that that I do update. 
I actually have like a more specific, like just on his character sheets and notes and the appearance is just okay. He has a scar here, scar here, like all the specific scars. It's a very long list now. I know it. Oh my gosh, dude! One day we're gonna get like separated for like however long, and like we're gonna meet up in like ten years, and I won't be able to recognize you. <laughs> Your entire face is just scarred over in a completely different shape, and your skin's a different <laughs> color. <laughs> Eventually, he's just all scar, so he's like, so his skin's just like one cohesive color because it's just all scar tissue. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's all like a little bit lighter. <laughs> nah. Uh, yeah. So I will award this before we head out. Um, this last fight was a little tougher than some of the other ones you've done. Um, but uh, thank you so much for playing with me, guys. I'm going to end the stream. Thank you for hanging out, guys, Bye. who are in the stream. Bye. Thank you for the lurks. For uh, TV Nomad, thank you so much. Or Nomad TV, rather. Thank you so much for the bits. That was a nice surprise. I really appreciate you. Uh, and like, subscribe, whatever else you guys do. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. And it was nice seeing you on camera, Nick. Yep, finally got that all set up. <laughs>